Good evening, my lovelies, and welcome. I'm Lady McCreepster. If you are a pet owner, you know how important it is to make sure your pet gets enough exercise and is on the right sort of diet. In today's tale, though, from the No Sleep Reddit by author Mr. Michael Squid, it would seem there is concern about one particular neighbor's cats as they seem to be gaining a lot of weight recently. Let's find out why, shall we? Come now, my dears. Lean in closer, and we'll begin. Betty is my neighbor and has been for 27 years. She always had something to say about other people's business. Betty always had a particular way of doing it, too. A way that just got under your skin like the prickly spines of a cactus. She sure had something to say when my husband took off with that younger girl he met at a bar. Haven't seen Bobby around much lately, she said when hanging her laundry on the line one day. She said it from behind a pink towel that was blowing around in the wind, but I got a glimpse of that snide smile creeping onto her face. She was reveling in the fact that my marriage was dissolving. Jealous old bitch. I fumed in silence and went on picking up the pieces of my life. Then, just a few months later, I got a knock at my door. There she stood at my door, grinning like a giddy child on Christmas Day. Her puffy cheeks rose as her smile widened, like she was proud of her yellow speckled teeth. Got your mail at my place by accident, Holly. Betty offered me my mail, ripped open at the top. Was reading it by accident, thinking it was mine, but thank God it's yours. With that... She handed me the letter from my doctor's office and sauntered back to her house. I knew she had read it. My diagnosis. But thank God it's yours. Her voice swam around in my head as I read the crushing news. I always loathed that nosy woman and the way she'd pick away at people. Everyone in our neighborhood did. Betty always played the role of the innocent cat lady, who meant no harm, though. There was a method to her words that skirted the line between naive and downright evil. So calm and quiet this summer, she'd said to Mrs. Miller a few doors over one day. Might seem like a pleasant observation, but she said this after Mrs. Miller lost her daughter and grandchildren in a terrible fire. They hadn't visited that summer to splash about in the pool, all screaming and giddy like they had the past five years in a row. I'd heard the tragic news a few days earlier, and I knew Betty had too. I watched Mrs. Miller break down in tears in the middle of the street before running indoors. Once again, I saw that sinister smile creep onto Betty's face, raising those wrinkled cheeks and lighting up her eyes. It was about then I'd had enough of Betty. I'm pretty sure we all had. An idea clawed its way into my head, an idea that grew until it developed into a routine. I started watching Betty's house from my bedroom window through the blinds. I began to learn her schedule, when she'd be out each day for lunch in town, when she'd visit the park each week and the salon once a month. I cut up some fatty raw steak and brought it to her house once she'd driven off. I then made my way over to her house and dished a dozen or so morsels of that raw meat through her cat door. They all came running, all 14 of those cats. Some orange, some calico, some black and some white. All rushed over and began to feast in a ravenous frenzy. 
they barely touched their bowl of dry cat food, so I reached in and took the plastic bowl and emptied it out in the trash. I made feeding Betty's cats a habit. Every time she'd get in her car and drive off, I'd walk over and deliver the fresh red meat. The cats would shove each other aside to get to the cat door, and they'd feed ferociously. Their primal urges drawing them forth and dilating their slits of eyes. Each visit, I'd toss out the dried cat food and head back home. For weeks, I did this. I'd stare out of my window and watch the cats slinking about in her living room. They looked plump and happy. That's when I changed course. Two months into my duties as head chef for Betty's cats, I stopped bringing meat. Instead, I'd wait until she drove off and then I'd head over with nothing but a plastic measuring cup. I'd then reach in and remove a scoop or two from their large cat bowl, just enough to keep them lean and hungry. Each time, I took a little more until they began to hiss and scratch at my hand when I reached in to chip away at their food supply. They were getting more aggressive, and that made me smile a bit like Betty might when feigning concern for one of the neighbor's misfortunes. Soon, those cats began howling at night, like something awful. It was a sickening sound that curdled my blood and raised the hairs on my arms. I'd lift the curtain of my window and peek into her living room and see the cats wandering about, thin and bony. A few nights, I saw Betty's lights come on and I'd hear her yelling at that large group of felines. I began to hear that growling and hissing responding back at her. I slept soundly those nights. Then came the first Tuesday of the month when Betty would drive off to her salon appointment. This day, her car sat in the driveway reflecting the sun. I heard no hissing and no growling. Then... I saw a plump tabby perched in the window, its fur stained red. It brought a smile to my face. It's been a week and Betty's car is still sitting in her driveway. A few white splats of bird shit have decorated a windshield and that made me smile. She sure would be pissed off, but I have a feeling she's not going to the car wash. I'll likely call in the next few days to ask for a wellness check, but not right now. Right now, I just want to savour the moment and watch Betty's cats leisurely mosey about, well-fed and content. And my lord, those cats are getting fat. Thank you for joining me this evening, my lovelies. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. I do love hearing from you. If you are listening on the podcast and would like to reach out to me, find me on social media. I am Lady McCreepster on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. And last but not least, I would like to thank all of my supporters on Patreon, as it is you that helps keep this podcast and YouTube channel going. Dark family members such as Dawn Fritzwater, Melissa Perez, Honey Santiago, Oliver Dace, Karen Parrott, L. Andrew Augustus, Dana Fringer, Stephen Aguilera, Tay the Floof, Laura Setapenry, Bill Thornsley, and Jacob Schaefer along with everybody listed in the episode description below. If you too would like to find out how you can support this channel and podcast, go to patreon.com slash Lady I say this all the time, but I truly do mean it. Your support really does mean the world to me. 
Unfortunately, my dears, that is all the time we have for this evening. Till next time, sweet dreams.